You learn to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abbott brings you God's word with deep insight and power. God bless you. What would you do? What would you do? I tell you, my name is Lucifer. Oh, I tell you, my name is Saddam Hussein. Oh, I tell you, my name is Osama Bin Laden. Tell me the truth. What will you do? Would you show me the way out of the office? You show me the door. Why? Because of what associates with that name. Because of what is associated with that name. Everybody know that Judas is a betrayer. If I employ this guy whose name is Judas, not just Judas, his son name is his carrot. <laughs> this guy is going to sell me. He's going to sell this company. Bankrupt everything. Let me ask you, how come you have not seen anybody who bears the name Judas? How come you have not seen even unbelievers, even sinners who don't go to church are careful the name they call their children. An old money man calls his child Chuku Emeka. He's careful the name he calls his own child. Yet he doesn't go to church. He doesn't believe in God. I've hardly seen people bearing Judas. Yet Judas is a very beautiful name. Do you know what Judas means? Praise. That's the meaning of Judas. Judas simply means praise. Such a beautiful name. So people bear the name praise and they think they are bearing something else. Your name is simply Judas. That's what your name is. You're Judas, my friend. Anybody who is answering praise, remove the praise and be calling him Judas. But the shock it is when you call him Judas, you'll be offended. Not knowing that that's what his name means. I wish there's somebody here now who is praise. We just remove the praise and I'll, uh, Judas, please come. You see how the person who from bed is your name. But you don't want to bear Judas because of who bared it or bore it. Who is answering Satan? Okay, who is answering Lucifer? Do you know Lucifer is a very beautiful name? Do you know what Lucifer means? Should I tell you what it means? Light. The meaning of Lucifer is light. Star. Light. Hey, you are a star. I'm only saying you are a Lucifer. You are the light of the world. You are the Lucifer of the world. But you know what to answer Lucifer because you know what he did. <laughs> you know what he did. You know who he is. And you don't want anybody to, act, to even call your children or anything, you know? Okay, who have you seen answering Jabez? Do you know Jabez in the Bible? Why was he called Jabez? They say he was born out of what? Sorrow and hair. So who wants to answer Jabez? Who wants to answer the name Ichabod? The glory has departed. That's it. Who wants to answer that name? Okay, give me some names you know that people don't answer again, but they existed. Who ahead? Thank you, Jezebel. But do you know the meaning of Jezebel? Okay, go and find out. That's your assignment. Who wants to answer Ahab? Jezebel. Who have you seen answering Gehazi? But we want to answer Elijah, Elisha, John, Mary. You see somebody who has slept with 3,339 men in the city. He's answering Mary. He has 14,000 sugar daddies. He's answering Mary. Why not just change the name to Rahab? Who have you seen answering the name Vasti? You see the most proud women in the world. Yet they want to answer names like Esther. They want to answer names like Ruth. 
They want to answer names like Naomi. They want to answer names like Mary. Who have you seen answering Herod? Is somebody here with me? You see the teaching now. This is what I'm going to be doing to bring special, special trainings your way. That we help you see the real deal, the real deal. So that when you start tidying up these things, I'm telling you that this is what I'm working on now. When you start tidying some of these small, 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 when you see a car that is not able to move, sometimes it's not big, big issues, though. it's small, small, small issues. Do you know one knot that loses out of a tire can ground the whole car? Just a knot you didn't tie that breaks out of a tire, the whole tire can come out, and a whole car that cost millions can somehow sort and damage, and even the people in the car can die. And then you trace the fault to a knot that was not properly tied. So you can have skills, competence, eloquence, ability, and all kinds of knowledge, information at your back and call, and wisdom and all that. But small, small areas of your life that just needs to be taken care of. For me now, Thursday is the main service. You see, I can't even wait for it. It is a way that you will do me. I will even fix another one tomorrow. There are too many things I am coming, too many discoveries coming up in my head, and I'm wondering what are we sleeping in the house with? This is where we should even be going for more knowledge, going for going for these trainings and learning, so we can know where the devil has been dealing with us and where to go and tidying up all those. You see, a car is a complete fixture. You see tires, four tires, all the knots. If you want a good drive, make sure everything is tidied well. Make sure your steering is working well. Make sure your dashboard is supplying information well. Make sure the hydraulic is in the brake. Make sure your engine oil is sufficient. Make sure there's fuel in the tank. Make sure you have your headlamps working. Make sure your trafficator is working. Make sure your wiper. Why are all those things important? Because they solve different problems. I found that, that we, if it's possible, let's even be meeting every day. Because there are different areas. Maybe the one I'm dealing with now is the wiper. That you've gotten the wiper doesn't mean that you don't need a headlamp. That you've gotten the headlamp working does not mean you don't need trafficator. You need all those things put together. So that as you journey in life, you get to places where rain begins to fall. You know you need wiper. To get the thing out. To get the thing out. Then you're now hitting night on the road. You don't need wiper to give you light. It may not be raining. It's not wiper you need. You now need headlamp. You reach it somewhere and then there are, you, you want to do an overtaking and then there are people on the road who are not hearing. They can't see an incoming car. You can't wind down your glass and be shouting from there. Hey, Papa, I'm peeping. Claire, Claire. No, you don't need to do that. Just press the steering. The horn would tell people that the car is coming. That's how your life is. It's like a car. It's like a building and everything must be fitted in order. Oh, All these things we are teaching, the Bible said that they are good though, for doctrine, is good though, for reproof, for rebuke, for correction. And then at the end, he now says, so that the word, man of God, may be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. You read the Bible, you see where he says to your Knowledge, add virtue to your, to your faith, add virtue to your virtue, add knowledge to your knowledge, add this to it. There is a building block. When you put one coach, you don't say, I've arrived. You put another coach. You finish now, you put another coach. You finish now, you put another coach of block. You keep putting them like that until you move that building to Lintel. Even when you've got into Lintel, you don't say, I'm done now. You need to start doing the roofing work. You don't say I'm done because you did roofing. You need to now do the, what do you call them, the plumberings. You do the plasterings. You do the, there are different things to handle. There are doors your skills will open. 
there are doors that skills will open. For instance, when it comes to the issue of trust, I don't need skills. What do I require? Faithfulness. What do I require? That's a man who can betray me. That's what is needed. You can have an anointed, skillful person. Anointing can take care of yokes. By the anointing, the yokes shall be destroyed. Anointing can take care of sickness and all that. Hey, when a person is sick, bring the anointed guy. He will lay hands and he will be healed. But when it comes to the issue of trust, the issue of maybe, <laughs> you can't be putting an anointed person there. That's going to be suicide. You now need a faithful man. So I'm going to run on this one now. Let's look at Philippians, you know. Uh, Chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. And then... Glory to God Almighty. Philippians chapter 2. Now let me read you verse 9. See what it says. Wherefore God also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every what? Giving him a name which is above every name. Who are we talking about here? Jesus. Jesus. Now look at verse 10, what he means. He said that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Can you imagine that the only thing God gave Jesus a settlement for his labor was a name. All the things that Jesus suffered here on earth, all the price he paid here on earth, all the death he died here, the burial, everything he went through, all those scourging, all those weeping. When the man rose and went back to the father, the only thing the father gave him as reward for a job well done was a name. Was a name. That should tell you how important it is. You see, was a name. I'm talking to you about the power of a good name. When I go down, you will now see how to protect it. You will now see the, the forces that fight it. If the devil wants to fight a man, he doesn't fight anything else. He wants to just block your door. His name, he go and fight. Nothing again. He wants to block doors for you. He wants to block progress. His name is nothing else he fights. To the devil, fighting your name is more work than fighting your health. Because when they fight your health, what we need to get you back in place is the power of God. is healing anointing. Once we just lay hands on you, you'll be recovered. You'll be healed. Once your name is under attack, you need more than anointing. Because that one travels beyond the body. It travels into the heart. That's where it, it goes into the heart and that's where the devil does the, the, the biggest knockout. Destroy people. I want to arm you right now with what it takes. To, to frustrate that idiot and that fool. You know, you can just be in your house now. Having a good time with God. And certainly somewhere raising people who will destroy your name. Yes. Raising people who will make your life unbearable, who will who will make you whatever, who will disgrace you, who will speak evil of you, who will speak bad of you and make you look like a devil. We will get to that part of the teaching, but there is also a part you must play. There is another one that deals with you. You can also be all Satan. So, it is a balanced diet we are dealing with now. Huh. So 
So the only thing that God gave Jesus was a name. He said, God has done what? Let's read it again now. So we can get it clear. The same Philippians chapter 2 verse 9. Okay, so you can even understand. Let's read from verse Verse 7, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So now, see what this guy went through. See everything Jesus went through. And then God is so wowed by the kind of sacrifice he paid. The kind of depth of sacrifice and price that the man paid. And then God wants to now award him. Wants to now bless him. Wants to now celebrate him. Wants to now give him something of value. It's just like maybe somebody who went to university, studied for four years, and then graduated the first class, went to do, and came back home. And then I'm so impressed. Ah, and I want to bless this my son or this my daughter. Who has made me proud. And then I go and buy a car. That's just to tell you how happy I am that he made the first class. You know people do all kinds of crazy things when people impress them. Maybe your wife did something amazing and powerful. And then you want to surprise her on her birthday. You go and buy her one powerful Range Rover Jeep. And you need to see the way they throw party, the way they jump. <laughs> what God gave Jesus. When I studied it, it now showed me it's more important than Range Rover. It's more important than house. It's more important than contract. It's more important than anything else in the world. And that is what we must begin to work hard now. No matter what it will take. To do the best we can do to protect it to an extent. Hmm. Are we together? So in verse 9, it says, Wherefore God, because of all the things Jesus has done, God now has given him a name. Wherefore God has highly exalted him, rather, and given him a name which is above every name. And I'll say that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Can you imagine that? That at the name of a person, knee should bow. Both things in heaven, things on earth, even things beneath the earth, should bow. At the name of a person. 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 There are names that open doors. There are names that get job. There are names that get money. Without even working for it, just name, it gets things happening. At the mention of somebody's name, knew shall bow. Even both the ones in heaven, the ones on the earth, the ones under the earth. Is this thing making sense to you now? <laughs> there are people who carry CVs running from office to office looking for jobs. There are others who carry names. They just knock on the door. A secretary opens the door. You say, I, who are you here to see? I want to see your manager or your boss. Are you on appointment? No. Who are you? My name is Susan and so Dangote. He says, Susan and so Dangote. I didn't hear Aliko. He said Dangote. Which of the Dangote? He said, I am the son of Aliko Dangote. Please sit down, sir. And he pressed the bell, opens the office. Sir, there's one guy who is there. I've not seen him before, but he says his name is Usman Aliko Dangote, that he's the first son of Aliko Dangote. He said, Aliko Dangote, can you bring that boy inside now before you lose your job? Hmm. Name. And the truth of the matter is that that guy may be the 50th person on the waiting list, too, but that name alone would make him jump the rest who are waiting. Name. Powerful. Dangerous. There are some people whose signature and name on a small card is as powerful as a visa. Just one small card. 
with one name and signature only is as powerful. Some are even more powerful than a visa. There's some complimentary card. If you have it, you will never lose it. You will never lose it. Because you know what you have is equivalent to visa. <clears throat> Everybody say name. I know you've not been taught this one in church before. Am I right? They've not taught you. Did you hear? That's why I'm arranging special, special meetings, small, small meetings where I can help people who want to be helped. Everything is all power, move, flow, take, receive. <laughs> oh, yeah, collect. Well, when I used to stand in there, I say, fall down, take it. No, 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 that's, everything is not that. That's why this one is called mentoring. It's top gear mentoring platform. This is a mentoring platform. It's not for shouting. Is a mentoring platform. Small card. But it's equivalent to visa. Glory to God. Okay, let's take one more scripture and then we'll begin to break down things. Ah, Proverbs chapter 22 verse 1. Oh, oh, oh. And these are the small, small things though that if you just gain wisdom in it, you'll know how to deal with it. You will just know how to deal with it. Especially in this generation that has become so bold. This generation has become so wicked. It can do anything to destroy people. Satan is actually having vacation now. And the human beings are doing the job of the devil. I want to let you know this. When you want, when the devil wants to give you the real attack, it's not in your health. It's not even in your finances. Because he knows what makes all these things bow. His name. So he attacks that one. Ah, the governor promised me 10 million. He said I should come two days and collect it. Two days later and come and collect it. And then, two days later, the same governor who was smiling with you, laughing with you, playing with you, the day he promised you, you come the next day, and he's avoiding you. The problem is that somebody has tampered with name. I love you so much. I will marry you. You are my wife. You are my bride. You are my everything. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. I will take you to the world. Paris. Everywhere. Me and you is for life. I have given you assurance. I will even buy you private jet. Don't worry. <clears throat> All it takes is your girlfriend. That your roommate. That your close friend. All it takes... Is just a two minutes of discussion with that same guy, and then he finds she finds a way to mess up your name. Talks about how you are flat. Talks about how you are this, how you are that. Says things that you have not even imagined doing. That's all she needs to do. Once the thing passes through the guy's ear and settles in the heart, that's all the miracle and magic that girl needs to scatter that plan. I think the biggest wisdom you can begin, you should begin to learn now is the wisdom of how to protect your name. How to manage your name. It's a big, it's a big cause. I just started developing this thing and I'm, I'm still going to take it to a higher level. Maybe it will even become a book. People are suffering things in life because of name. There's some who are suffering it for just cause, so but there are some who are suffering it for unjust cause. You will see the balance in the teaching. It's not a one-sided. It's a two-sided thing. And I will show you the remedies out of them all. Can I hear a big amen? amen. Okay. So now let's do Proverbs chapter 22 verse 1. See what the scripture says about a good name. It says, a good name is rather to be chosen than what? Hey, you didn't come with your Bibles. Let me read it. Listen. A good name is rather to be chosen 
than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. So God puts good name above riches. He said they put billions here now and they put good names side by side and they ask you to choose. Don't choose the billions. Choose the good name because that's what controls the billions. And he now says, and favor also to be preferred than gold and silver. There are people who enjoy 247 favor without prayers just because of the kind of name. And sometimes it may not even be the actual, the very person we're talking about. It could be the lineage from where he's coming. It could even be your father's name. Because this is about name is that it does not only open door for you who bears a name. The name of people before you can either open doors for you or close doors. Name is too powerful that even when God introduces himself, he looks for people with good names. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Go and study these three guys. Is he not the creator of everybody? Why is it that when it comes to selecting names of people, he looks for those Watch all the names of God. You will see there's something about names. This thing called name, powerful. Watch the, the names. Watch the names of God. That's why you must be careful. That's your greatest capital. You don't allow both yourself or anybody destroyed for you. I will teach you the techniques today. I have learned it. That's what you must die to preserve. The Bible says a good name is better than riches. And loving favor, that means falling in love with favor is better than falling in love with gold and riches. Because when your name is intact, favor will come naturally. Do you know a young man by the name of Jonathan was very friendly with David. Jonathan was so faithful a friend, so faithful that there's nothing that Saul, the father, Saul, King Saul was wicked. He sought out all ways possible to kill and destroy David. Because he felt David was competing for the throne with him. So he was looking for every way possible to kill him. People were praising David more than him. And then he was jealous and envious. Jonathan, being the son of Saul, would not partner with the father in doing that. He would always question the father, what has this guy done to you? This is the guy that helped you kill your Goliath. He helped you deal with your problem. Why are you trying to kill this guy? And then, at the end of the day, watch what happens. Saul launches a missile, launches a javelin, launches an attack. Carries out his plan, draws up his plan perfectly, and waiting to carry. Jonathan goes to David and says, Take off for your life. This man wants to kill you. And he did it severally. And David was so overwhelmed with the kind of covenant friend he has, a person who can protect him both in secret and in open. He's talking to the Father, he's protecting the image of that guy. So he's accusing David of all kinds of mischief, accusing him of all kinds of things. But Jonathan is here sanctifying the name of his friend, saying, no, 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 he's not like that. This guy means good for you. He killed your Goliath. Don't do this nonsense you want to do to him. And then he comes back to David and tells him, I don't know why my dad hates you. This is what you need to do. Take off for your life or you'll disappear. Why? Now, what Jonathan was doing seemed like nothing until David became king. So when Jonathan grew, you know, and then died, it got to that point. David had to look back and said, Is there anything left in the house of Saul that I may favor him for the sake of my friend, Jonathan? 
And then there was one guy. I don't know if I should call him an imbecile or something. What is that his name again? What is his name again? Mephibosheth. The guy was just sleeping on his own, playing on his own, whiling away time on his own, doing nothing for whatever reason. And the king was in the palace deciding destiny because of somebody's name, Jonathan. For the continuation of this message, please play the next track.